what's happening in Australia. So there's a, a fair amount of generic support available that both men and women can access. Um, so police, ambulance, legal aid, etc. However, generic support is often unaware of the unique issues faced by male victims um, because of the silence around this issue. So they are often unable to offer effective or appropriate help. And at the worst, um, some generic services may not believe men when they disclose, they may minimise their experiences or even blame them for the abuse. And the uh, Western Australian research done last year surveyed about 200 service providers around Australia and they themselves rated themselves and their agencies as only moderately effective in overcoming those barriers to men disclosing. So there's a lot of work to be done. So what I've done here, I'm not expecting you to read this tiny font, but <coughs> I basically um, went to the main domestic violence uh, websites around Australia and all the states and territories and listed all of the services that they referred to there. Um, so that's a snapshot of what's available in Australia uh, today. Now the, the boxes in pink are women's only services, so men unfortunately can't access them, so we can remove them from the chart. The boxes in grey, the generic services I was talking about, and it's really a lucky dip as to whether men who approach those services get the appropriate support that they need. Um, especially uh, another issue is that individual workers in generic services may be aware of these issues and may have training and appropriate skills, but their workplace cultures often don't support them. So let's remove those generic services. What we have left are male-friendly services that are set up for men, um, but some of these don't specialise in the issue of family, issues of family violence that may support men around relationship breakdown or other issues. Um, so let's remove those. So this is what we're left with in terms of tailored, specific resources supporting male victims of family violence in Australia. So what do we have? Men's Line Australia, the National Telephone Counselling Line. Um, recently, the government's committed three quarters of a million dollars for them to train their counsellors to support male victims of family violence. That's the first federal funding for male victims that we're aware of in Australian history. However, we don't know if the funding's been allocated or who will be conducting the training or how appropriate it would be. Also, Men's Line is often the only port of call for many men, especially in regional areas, where because Men's Line <coughs> is a referral service, there's often no services for men's line to refer the men on to. And until the One in Three campaign launched 18 months ago, men's line only provided resources for male perpetrators, not for male victims. So it's only recently that they've been taking this issue on. Men in Queensland are particularly lucky. They've got their own uh, men's line counselling service, telephone counselling service. There's also a court support service supporting men through the court process in Queensland. There's a small service in the Hunter Valley that was established a year ago, maybe two years ago, um, to, to support uh, male victims. Um, since the beginning of this year, police in Windsor and Northern Sydney have been referring men to the Haw Hawkesbury District Health Service um, for counselling. There are, of course, in some great individual counselling services and practices like, like Tony's and Elizabeth's, but uh, they um, uh, can be harder for men to find and, and sometimes harder for men to afford. In the last three dot points, there are all websites, which are great to have websites out there, but they're no substitute for face-to-face um, -face services. In terms of professional development for workers in the sector, Greg's going to talk about his program after me, so I'll leave that to him. That's the only training program we're aware of. So what is required to meet the needs of this group of victims of crime? Um, the Western Australian report from last year had four key recommendations. One is government funded public awareness campaigns to raise community awareness of this issue that it can happen to men. And they were really, really clear to say these campaigns need to be very carefully designed so as to complement campaigns that are um, stopping violence against women and not damage the effectiveness of those campaigns. So we want to support men and women here. It's not a competition. Um, the second point was to consider uh, providing a, a range of public, publicly funded services specifically for male victims. So that would be a similar range of services that are available to women. So examples would be um, uh, counselling, uh, helplines, crisis response, um, community education programs, 
special services for different sections of the male population, so gay men or Aboriginal men, called men, um, financial support, legal advice, the full spectrum of services. They, they're not recommending that as many services would be available for men as for women, but a similar range, so at least there are some services there for men to access. Um, uh, perpetrator programs for women, which are uh, relatively absent, and health service screening tools. In a number of states, when women come in contact with health services, they have a compulsory screening tool to see whether they have experienced domestic violence. Men aren't screened at all, and so men will often fall through the gaps there. The third, third recommendation was to consider how services for men could be integrated with women's services and generic services. Obviously some services would be able to be integrated and others may have to stay gender specific. And the fourth recommendation was for training for workers in the sector, especially around dismantling those barriers to men disclosing so men can actually come forward and tell their stories in confidence that they're going to be trusted and supported and their experiences won't be denied or minimised or questioned. What else? We'd also recommend uh, MPs and public servants need training because they're the ones who are running, who are writing the laws and rolling out the programs that unfortunately have excluded men in the past. Men need to be included in the national plan to reduce violence against women and their children and all the systemic reforms that are rolling out across the country. Um, at the moment, it's acknowledged that men can be victims, but basically that's it. They're, they haven't been um, included in any other way. Um, we need better ABS and other data, the upcoming personal safety survey, which is the gold standard of research in the country in terms of a broad community survey. There's a new survey being planned for 2013 and it's going to have three times the women's sample compared to men, so the data on male victimisation is not going to um, be as good as for women. And finally, uh, we need tertiary education courses, so uh, people who are going into social work, health and other human services um, actually need the training so that they then have the skills to support men when they are working in their professional roles. So my contact details are for there and I'll hand back to you, Elizabeth. Thank yeah, you. Thanks very much, Greg. Can we can give Greg a round of applause, please. This is his second presentation, so he's done a fabulous job in putting together a whole bunch of information. And obviously in terms of looking at methodological considerations and the unique experiences of men, whilst some of their abuse <coughs> may be similar to the levels of abuse um, the women may experience, there are certainly some unique experiences from the masculinity perspective. So please uh, prepare your questions <coughs> for Greg.